My name is William Craycroft Ely. I'm a cereal farmer from Lincolnshire and I'm here to talk to you today about this amazing uh, energy crop, Miscanthus, and what I've done to make it the number one energy crop in the UK and to explain to you why it has the potential to make every single farm a significant supplier of renewable energy. In 2006, I put about 10% of my highest risk land into um, Miscanthus, a perennial energy crop. I did so because with wheat prices at £70 per tonne, this margin, more marginal land, which was expensive to farm, high risk, just wasn't profitable. <coughs> By doing that, what I hadn't realised uh, was the win I was going to have on the rest of the farm as well as the land that is growing Miscanthus. So instantly we were drilled up a month earlier. We were hitting our key spray and fertiliser dates and our yields on the rest of the farm improved significantly. In fact for a 10% loss of cereal land we have only suffered on average a 2% loss of yield. So that is the food versus fuel argument uh, answered, as well as a very, very sound economic argument for uh, doing exactly what we did. So we've talked a little bit about uh, Miscanthus uh, and its place on my farm, but in particular perhaps what, uh, what I would like to bring to, uh, to people's notice is really why I am so enthusiastic about Miscanthus and why I think it has such a huge role to play. Uh, for a start, uh, nationally I think uh, perennial energy crops have an enormous uh, role in terms of providing a truly sustainable local biomass energy source. We are not a country that is rich in timber and we will soon be uh, massive net importers of biomass and I think having local to local and homegrown biomass is a real strong marketing point. Uh, that is something that has been recognised by the Committee on Climate Change and it has found its way to into the bioenergy strategy. The other thing about, about Miscanthus is that it is a really fantastic opportunity for farmers in the UK to have a genuinely stable enterprise on their farm. That brings them very strong renewable credentials. It, in environmental terms and in sustainability terms, reduces their fertiliser requirement for the whole farm. It uh, can be used in situations to, uh, which are perhaps nitrogen or spray sensitive, such as close to water courses and other things. And it offers that sort of land the opportunity to produce a really productive energy source. I have said briefly that I set up TerraVesta to produce uh, that market and the supply chain. That sounds easy. Actually, that has been fantastically complicated to set up. It's been complicated because actually getting the product into a palatable form is not easy. We have had to research that. The uh, markets, such as the big power stations and the big power companies, to be convinced that we have this and have it long term has been uh, a tremendous uh, marketing and uh, convincing uh, effort. And therefore there's been an enormous amount of work that has gone into TerraVesta. There has been a tremendous amount of work into convincing government actually that we have it. And then it's about convincing and showing growers actually how to grow it, how to produce the right specification. The specification that can be turned into a usable product. Uh, it's been about uh, testing it in boilers to make sure that the properties of Miscanthus are, and the properties of the boilers are well matched. And all of this still is work in progress, but it has come an enormously long way. And that is why I say that I'm perhaps at the beginning of the journey rather than at the end. But I think the future for Miscanthus is absolutely enormous.